Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's see. Can you guys hear me? I want all messages on here. Gotta listen to myself to see if I can hear it. I want all messages on here. Okay, I can hear myself. Hi, Sarah. I know you're homeschooling. Okay, I have a lot, a lot of work to do. We are leaving for our vacation tomorrow, and yesterday, of course, was a half day at school, so that left me with kids all day and I couldn't work. So I have way more to do today than I wanted to have to do today. Plus pack for everybody and get ready for our, we're going on a seven day cruise with our family. So the six of us and then um, the six of my brother-in-law's family and then our, my, my in-laws basically so there's going to be 12 of us let's see yeah six 14 of us sorry six yeah so just the two of our families and then his parents so yeah there's gonna be a lot of us um okay so first things first i'm gonna get this shirt on Let's see, da, 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 da. I cut a lot of these out, but I still have a lot of cutting to do. So this is going to be a really, really, really long live. I'm basically going to work until I have to leave today at 2 to go pick up the kids. So whoever can be here, awesome. Um, come in and out, however you please. But um, I'm going to be here all day. 4T Ruffle. Can you hear me okay though? Let me know. I'm way over here. I wanna know if my mic is working. Too groovy. I'm pretty sure that's the one that I redid. Okay, good. Good morning, good morning. Hi everyone. Okay. <clears throat> and hopefully you guys can see me. I have the ca camera like up top again. And my landscapers are here. I waited. That's why I scheduled it at 9.30 because they got here at nine. So they should be done. Um, right behind my shop where you can hear it. So if they do come back, I'm sorry. Let's get that one. Low. No, not that one. I have been so busy, so I haven't been active. If you guys haven't have noticed, I haven't really been posting as much as I was the last few weeks. I've just been crazy busy coming up to this, um, coming up to this vacation. So trying to get my life together. <coughs> and of course I am getting a cold, but obviously you can't cancel on a cruise. So hopefully it's just a little cold. Um, let's see, four. I switched all these colors around because I've been having a lot of embroidery birthday shirts. So four and two. Okay, so four all the way down. And I did change this design. I was able to fix it. I don't know if on you guys were on the last live where I was like, I wish that I could fix the color situation and the applique situation, and I was able to do it. So that's good. Um, I don't remember how it went though. So I think I printed it. 
Maybe, maybe not. Let me go pull it up on the computer. Good morning, everyone. Probably gonna take my jacket off because it's getting a little warm in here. I always get warm when I come in here. I don't know if you can see me way back here. Hopefully, let me just gonna grab something off the computer. <laughs> Open sesame. Let's do too groovy. Too groovy. Let's see. Placement, 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 placement. Okay. I'm gonna print this out because this is the one that I just changed. And I was able to do dun 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 dun. dun. Okay. Print. I was able to change it. So what I did was basically just go in in brilliance and I just marked all my placement stitches and all my tack down and then the applique and I just moved them around in there. So I've never actually done that before, but now I know how to do it. So I didn't, I, I didn't even watch that video. I just kind of messed with it and it ended up working. So that was good. And I do have to use my printer today, but I'm going to, I think I'm gonna cut everything out first because that all needs to be cut. I have to get all these orders out today. So today is gonna be a true live work with me on how I would normally work. I'm gonna talk to you guys, but I can't really like chat that much. I know I always say that, but I really, really, really like need to focus today because we have to be out we have to be at the airport at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. So I have to get, I think, let me see how many I have that need to go out today. I think it's 18 that I have to do today that need to go out. I need to renew that. Print these out. My printer is being really slow for some reason. Okay, well, I'm not going to sit there and wait for that. Epson, okay. Print. That's all I need. Okay, we'll come back to that. That's doing it really slow. So let me just go ahead and put these in. So we want to do stop all the way down to can't tell in here. Just put it in and then change it. Let's see. Stop. 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 Okay. Move it up a little. Are you guys working today? What are you guys doing? I was gonna film a video instead of going live because I haven't put a video out in a while, but 
it actually takes me longer to video because you have to like stop the camera and then move like different positions and all that stuff. So I was like, it's just going to be easier for me to go live than to actually film a video. I do want to start filming more videos. I think I'm going to go like more, I think I'm, when I go live, I'm just going to do like work with me lives like I always do. And then when I go to do a video, I think I'm going to do like a tutorial video or something like that. That way they're more educational. Um, and maybe throw in a work with me every now and then. But I think for me anyway, I'm, I'm super, <laughs> I just don't have time to like, videos are really hard for me is what I'm trying to say. What's in here? Oh, it's just the shadow. I'm like, what is that? Okay. You have come a long way. Aw, thank you, Linda. I never can't appreciate your videos because the camera is so far. It's because my shop is so big and I'm always all over the place. So when I actually start sewing, I can move you guys closer to me. But for right now, I'm kind of moving all around. Um, and not really... I'm just putting this on to the printer, or I'm sorry, the embroidery machine. So it's really hard for me to like put you guys right up next to me when I walk away and then you can't see anything I'm doing. So that's why I have the camera angle like this so you can see kind of wherever I'm going. But once I start working on the machine, I'll move the camera closer to me. And then I can move it up on the table while I cut, too. That way you guys can see me. But right now, I'm literally just putting this shirt on the machine. So I'm going to move this. I can't unorganize all this stuff. So I'm going to just set it aside for now. Everything is in order. I've just cut everything, and I'm getting everything situated right now. So this is a 4T short sleeve ruffle shirt that I'm putting on the machine. And sorry if you can't appreciate my videos. Um, I try my best, and it's really hard to accommodate everybody and make everybody happy, so I'm sorry. But you do what you got to do. And it's YouTube, so... You can leave if you can't appreciate it. Just saying. Good morning, everyone. I just got in the shop, so I haven't cleaned anything yet. So I will be cleaning my stuff. So if you hear the vacuum, it's going to be loud. I'm oiling my machine. just tracing it out right now if you're wondering it's a little big so I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller
still kind of big. I'm going to actually move it up a little bit more. Nope, up. And then I'm going to make it 90. It's at 95. I think I'm going to go like 92. Let's try that one. This has always been like set in the in the machine because I always do this one, but I, I went into the computer and redesigned it, making it stitch out faster. So now I'm resetting everything in here, which is why I'm having to do this. So, and then I'll save it in my computer system, the interface, so I don't have to do this again. So that looks better. So 92 is the golden number. Okay. So we're gonna let that go ahead and just stitch out. Don't do this to me today. I always forget which needles I've changed and which ones I haven't because you're just constantly changing out needles. I, I need to figure out like a system on how to keep track of that. Like maybe just write down what needle I just changed so that I know if it's the needle or not. I just kind of go by the, if it does this more than twice on the second time, I just kind of change the needle and it usually fixes the problem. I don't sit there and wait. Goodness, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Linda. Okay, so that is on. I have to cut out the pants for this, but I'm gonna cut all these pants out together. I'm actually gonna move my mic, I think. Sorry if it gets muffled, but I'm hot, so I'm gonna change my, take my jacket off. Okay, let's see if this Is it okay right there, Emmy? Let's put it like this. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Can you guys hear me okay like that? Okay. Let's see here. I'll move you guys over here so you can see what I'm doing. This angle is okay. How's that angle?
right, I have to cut out all of these right here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to cut out. And then I have all those over there that I just cut out last night. And then I have blanket orders behind me or in front of me, behind you guys. So we have a lot to do today. And then I still have to package everything at the end of the day. So like I said, this is gonna be a really, really long live. I'm gonna work until two o'clock. So from 10 to two, we're gonna work, 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 work. And I probably won't get done but what we do get done, I will package. That way I can take it to the post office. And then tonight I will probably either go live again and finish the rest if I have time, hopefully, or I just have to bust it out and then like get it to the post office in the morning. So we'll see. Um, so if I highlight my name, like if you have a question, Either one of my moderators on here can answer it if they know it, or if just highlight my name, and then I can see it pop up red. If I don't see it, then it's really hard for me to like keep up with everything. The view is perfect, thank you. Okay. Alrighty. Can you guys hear me okay over that machine? <coughs> Let's see, I'm looking for not in here so these are all my scraps if you're wondering and this is where I keep my scrap fabric um, from what I've cut out and I go to this first before I pull from the bolt and I usually get like cuffs or liners stuff like that out of these little pieces so right now I'm doing an 18 to 24 month bummy I hope that's not too loud over there. So like with this, I can get a little cuff. And then I try to save as much as I can. That way I can use like this for um, like a nursing pad. As I do it, this is how I work every day. So I put my pile right here that I'm cutting. And then as I cut, I put the order right here that I'm cutting. So it'll be a little bit different when I get to like the bell bottoms because some of them are the same size. So I'll kind of move around a little bit and you guys will be able to see like how I actually do it. So this I can use for a nursing pad and I just put it up here. These are my girl ones and these are my boy ones. So that's how I organize it. is great and can hear machine but your voice goes above it. Okay, perfect. As long as it's not like too loud in your guys' ears. It's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. You can't see my face, but you don't need to see my face. So I always fold my scraps like this, that way I can just like see like obviously that's not gonna work. So you know like the way that the print goes, I always have it going facing up this way. That's just how I, how I do it on this table. So I folded them like that. That's not gonna work, of course, because anytime I need something to just like work right away or be the right size, it never really is. We got real lucky on that one. So this is a cuff. There's my other cuff. I can still use this piece right here for like a newborn one. So I save it. I don't, I don't toss it. And then this one. Can also be saved. So all of this will go back in my piles here. And then I'm going to go grab the bolt over here.
Mm -hmm. This is looking good. Okay, so that's done. Ah, thank you, Sonia. You're sweet. I always like it to go a certain way. So I always roll these like this on the bolt so that when I unroll them, the fold is towards me. That way when I cut the fold, and then the print is always facing the same exact way every time. So. So all of these are on the fold. This is how I do it now to save fabric so I don't waste it. Now, if there's a little bit on the edge right here that I won't, won't be able to use, and that's fine. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure I don't cut too much off the top. It seems like this would take longer, but for me, it actually saves me time. So I go like that. And then I'll just do the same thing right here, knowing that that took that much fabric and that's wasting the least amount. I'll just go up the top right here. And I can see my point, it goes at an angle. So I need to make sure I don't cut too little. I need to cut enough. So I'll probably cut like at the top of the brown cone right here and just follow that line all the way across. Everyone has their own way of cutting. Everyone has their own way of doing things. This is just how I do it. And it's been working on for me and saving me a lot of fabric. So I'm that's what I do. And then this one is on the fold as well. So I'm gonna go this way and then I just do like that. And then I add a tiny bit extra that way. I don't cut myself short. Sorry, I have the sniffles. And then like this little piece right here, I can use for a, like a large cuff or whatever. And remember, I have this side right here piece that needs to be cut off, so. There's that. I like to cut it inside out. or right sides together. And that way when I go to sew it, I'm not flipping it all around. I've been cutting a lot, I need to change my blade probably. So always make sure your fabric is going the right way, the right direction. Don't look at my nails, I'm repainting them tonight. <laughs> They're all chipped. should have emptied my trashes. Okay, so I'm gonna set this one over here now. I'm gonna put this away, we don't need it anymore. That's looking good. Okay, next up, we have a zero to three legging and a six to nine month legging in the same print. So I can put these away. Okay, zero to three legging. And six 
to my legging. Where did I put that one? It's over here. different shade so like I've said before you have to be careful because Spoonflower sometimes does different shades of colors like this one is darker than that one so I can't put those together um and there's nothing I can really do about that it's just their print process so it's only happened literally twice I think and I'm still trying to find a way to use those other ones Raccoons, where are you? I guess we have to open a new one. I've been going through fabric like crazy, you guys. Like, how can I be out of that? I don't have it laying around anywhere. Nope. Okay. But these are the same, so we're good. So actually going to fold this really quick so that it's out of my way so this is how I do it it comes folded up like this from spoon flower and the way that I do it is I'm gonna go ahead and move my coffee out of the way <laughs> I take a drink of it. I just open it up. And again, I know that the fabric, I want the direction of the fabric to go facing this way. So that is how I fold it. But you have to spread it all apart because it's all stuck together from when they send it to you. So I've taught myself how to do this by myself. My brother, if any of you are here, when my brother worked with me and lived with me, him and I would tag team this every time I get fabric in and we would just put them on bolts real quick. But he's not here anymore, so I've learned how to do it myself. And we would literally grab one end, I would be over here, and he would go way over there and stretch it out. And it was super quick and easy. But now that I have to do it myself, it's a little bit different. So this is how I do it. And it's not hard. It just takes a little more time than having someone help you. It's like folding clothes, but I like to have it lined up perfectly. Obviously not perfect, but you know what I mean, the edges. So I'm not sure how many yards this is. I, it's probably six is what it looks like to me. I usually get between six and 10, depending on how popular the fabric is. But it doesn't take that much time to do this. And then it keeps me organized. I put it on a bolt and then I put it away. Okay, so now that that is good, I, I, I then take it back this way because I like to put it on the bolt on the other end. That's how it folds up the right way. So I take it this way. I need to find an empty bolt somewhere. There's one right here. Without dropping anything. Okay. 
I get my bolts at Hobby Lobby or Joanne's, but Hobby Lobby usually. I'm not making it perfect because I don't really have time to sit here and make it perfect, but usually I don't like to have these wrinkles in it. But I do go through this fabric really fast. This has been here from the very, very beginning. This was like one of my first prints from Spoonflower, this little raccoon. I don't know what it is about the little raccoon or the colors or what, but it's popular. And it was one of my favorites. It just caught my eye when I first got it. It's been around since 2017. <laughs> okay. So I folded it. My direction is going this way. And so that when I'm on here cutting, I have the fold towards me and my fabric is going this way. Let me just go ahead and move this to the next step. Good morning. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did before with this. The other one. I go like that. So basically with this, I already know because I've cut so many leggings out that I literally just measure. These are pretty much the same length. So I just take these and I know that the front is going to take this much and the back is going to take the same. So I just cut it off like that, except I don't, before I would just cut like the whole thing, now I cut the fold off because I don't need the whole separate underneath layer of it. That's just wasting fabric. So I'm gonna cut it to like the middle of this little IV plant or whatever you wanna call it. Because you have to leave room for that little angle at the top. And this is gonna be enough right here for both of these pieces. So there's that one. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. This one's gonna be a little bit smaller though. So it's basically like you're gonna do one fold and then twofold. But there's really nothing I can do with this little tiny piece over here, so I just cut the whole thing off. And you have to remember when you can't see it, make sure you're looking to see underneath how much edge you need to move up. So I can see through this, and I'm gonna cut on the top of this right here. You guys are gonna see me work real fast today. Okay, and then I like to fold it under, that way it holds a good fold. And then I use these little clips to secure it in place so it doesn't flop around everywhere. And then it goes into the cabinet. running out of room in here. Scoot over. So much fabric. 
Okay. Got it. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. I'm going to put this on here really quick so that I can keep this shirt going. So give me one second. Bear with me over here. Do any of these have applique or heat and bond? Heat and bond, heat and bond. Am I not heat and bonded up? Okay, I don't have any on here. So we're going to have to do that really quick. Let me turn my iron on. And we'll wait a second to do that. All right, let's let that heat up. And I already know that there's a bottom piece right here, so I'm not going to cut that off. I'm going to start my pattern all the way at the top. or not end this, so don't go anywhere. If this is working, let's see. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me okay or should I start a new one? I don't know. Let me know. I'm gonna fix this over here. Or actually, come over here. Maybe I should start a new one because I don't know where anybody's at. Okay, cool. Maybe I should start a new one. I don't know what happened. That was so weird. I literally looked up and I was just like flickering. I don't know what happened. But I'm going to come this way. Let's see. We're going to... I got to make some of... I got to make... I'm just going to do a big one, I think some applique pieces. We'll just do a big one for now. I do save these little pieces. I put them right here. I'm going to put my hair back for right now. Hopefully, I get everyone that was on before. Hopefully, they come back.
So all of these pieces, like this fabric that I'm using is leftovers from when I cut the bell bottoms out. And I use it for my applique pieces. So I'm never wasting fabric. And this is what I use now um, to apply my heat and bind. It's just easier than using the heat press. I used to use the heat press and then it would gum up my press and I cleaned it and I just, this is just much easier. It usually doesn't take this long, but it, the light's not green, so I'm just pressing it a little bit longer than normal. back over here. Hopefully my live is working now. I don't know why or what happened. I'm going to finish that when I come over here. It comes and goes. I don't know what. Maybe our internet is just not working today. I'll keep an eye on it to make sure it's okay. Okay. Let me know if it's bad. this really fast. It's pretty wrinkly. Much better. It's working for now. Okay. Sorry, guys. I haven't had internet issues for a while, I feel like. And now, all of a sudden, today I'm having issues. But the weather has been really bad here, so. And it, like, is supposed to storm. I think it rained all night last night. I don't know. It's really cold here. That's all I know. For me, anyway. I'm an Arizonan, so I don't know what cold is. It looks clear on my end, but I'm not sure if it's on your end. Can't use any of that for anything. I don't know, I'm OCD about this. I always have to have the back on first and then I put the front on. I'm weird. Okay, well, hopefully it's good. Okay, so six to nine, six to nine. Now I need six to nine cuffs, which I'm using the extra that I pulled from the bin.
Okay, so now I need a waistband for these. 15 and a half. those put these over here you guys were gonna have a pile to sew which is fine but it's gonna be a lot just trying to get through all these um, try and get through all these ones Watching you on my TV while I work. Ah, <laughs> seems like it's working. Do you have your acrylics with seam allowances? Yes, I made them that way. Thank you for answering that, Sandra. Yeah, so I had them made with seam allowances, so I don't have to put anything in. That's why I like it. It's so easy. I just go, um, cut, cut, cut. I don't have to worry about it. Okay, let's start with this. I have a whole nother ream that I need to pull out after we cut some. So I'm just gonna pull this off of here and we're gonna, we'll use this for the next one. Okay. I'll continue that shirt and once we go over there, I don't wanna keep having to go back and forth. So three to four, what size are these ones? 18 to 24. Two to three, 18, 24. So I have two 18 to 24s. Okay, <coughs> don't you bark, I'm gonna put you outside. Now you have zero to bark at. There's nothing to be barking about. So I like to get all of my um, waistbands on the fold. I only use this fabric for bell bottoms. If you're wondering why I'm cutting on the fold and different than I did before, it's because this I only use this for bell bottoms. So um, let's see, where's my 18 to 24? I'm gonna put that in there. There's one. This is just the easiest way for me to do it. And then all the extra, you'll see as I keep cutting. The extra one, extra fabric, like little pieces that I can't use, I use for um, the applique that I just was showing you guys. So 18 to 24. I'm gonna get a tag, because there's two pairs, two different sizes. So this is how I do it to keep it separated. And then the other one, what did I say, a four or five? Yeah, okay, so this is 18 to 24. I put the tag on here so that I know that this is the 18 to 24. Okay, so that goes with that, and then a four or five. Ugh. Got some big ones. So I always look at the sizes that are needing to be cut. That way I can uh, use the fabric wisely you know what I mean, without wasting. So I'm gonna waste a tiny bit right here and go up. So I have a, a few, couple of these to cut. So I am cutting all the waistbands out first. That way I can use the fabric without wasting it. So here's the 
this waistband I'm going to set right here. That way I don't get that out of the way. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and cut these because these ones are the biggest ones. And I feel like I can use most of this fabric without wasting a bunch of it. Which one is bigger? The back is bigger. So we're going to cut. See how it takes up most of that fabric? You have to cut double layers for each leg. So that's why I keep it just folded because you're going to cut them both out at the same time. And then I'll leave this right here. I can use for applique pieces right here. So this is using up the most amount of fabric without wasting a bunch of it. So that is why I do what I do. So this I can use for the flowers on the shirt or whatnot. So I just keep these aside and use those at a later point. Make sure you're putting pressure as you're cutting so it doesn't move. And I move around when I'm cutting it. And then I'll probably, I can use those pieces. Uh, yeah, not so much that. So there's one, that's the back, and the front is right here. Okay, so this is the four five. And then I'll just cut this piece off. And we can use that. And then I can't get this, this one's too big. Barely, so I'm gonna put that over to the side, but what I can do is I got the 18 to 24 month waist. This is done. I'm put that there. I can probably get these ones out of this material. So I can use that one, and I can use this one. And again, I like to waste as least as possible. That way I can save this right here for applique because I get a ton, ask Sandra. Every single day I do these shirts and so having this leftover fabric is not wasting it, I'm using it. So I'll cut off like these pieces I can't really use. I'll cut like here to here. And then it's, it's, I cut it in pieces because it's easier to put the heat and bond on like that. Okay, so there's one 18 to 24 month back. So when I'm doing multiples at a time, I like to complete one order first. That way I'm not like messing it up. So there's a back. And here is a front. Make sure you're getting the pieces on the back. Can't really use that. Okay, so I, I have two of these, but this one, these are this, this was the front and this was the back. So now this one is complete and I'm just going to put these together. So I still need the back to that one. And then I can probably use this. I'm going to cut this off right here. And now when I need a cuff, like a smaller cuff, like I can use it right here for a cuff. 
So I'm just gonna save this piece right here for that. Your micro flicking, one of your lights needs to be changed. It's the fan. Are you seeing it on this? It's the fan. It's not, it's not the light. The light's not flickering. When you go to sew it finally, how do you know what is the back and the front? I'll show you when I go to sew it. We're gonna go over there soon. I'm almost, I'm almost done. I think the rest of these are all this pattern, so it should be quick cutting. Um, and you'll see. I can show you right here on the pattern how you can tell. So when this is lined up, you can see this is the front and this is the back. See how they're like, there's this much and it slides down to the front. So you can see which one's the back and which one's the front. So much fabric. Because of time, I'm not going to sit here and roll all this. I'm going to cut it as I go. So I'll just make, I don't know. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just do it real quick because I don't want to get all. Messed up here. So this I definitely order, like this is 10 yards. This is a lot. Oh, it's the fan that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it's the fan. It was reflecting on the acrylic. Sorry for like this morning, if I sounded snappy, I wasn't trying to be snappy. It was just like the camera angle is really hard to accommodate everyone's needs. So, I mean, I've gotten feedback that you guys like it up there. So I've been putting it up in the corner. And then when someone comments like that, I just kind of like, I can't make everybody happy. So I try, that's why I go live on my phone so I can move you guys around with me. And I wasn't trying to be rude, it's just, you know, you can't make everyone happy. So that's just how I feel about it. It's really hard. Let's move that before I cut my finger off. Okay. Now we gotta roll it up. I 
And you guys know, I'm the first one, to be honest, I don't sugarcoat anything. <laughs> Tell you guys how it is. If you'd like it, then great. But I just... I tell you guys how I do things, and you can either use it or not use it. I just like to share my knowledge and what I do with you guys and whatever you do with it. Great. I love you all. But I like to stay positive on here and not complain. you know what I mean. I'm still trying to find a different print that looks like this floral pattern, but different colors, and I don't know what colors I'm into for it. I think I want to go more like, I don't know. That was not good. I thought you handled it great. Thank you, Deborah. Is your DT up and running again? I have to order two more prints from you. Yes, it is. I have fixed it and it's a lot faster and it's so good. So yes. Thanks, Deborah. I actually did too. And I was like, I didn't know like how to handle it. So I basically just said whatever came out of my mouth and mind at that time. <laughs> so hopefully that's why I was thinking about it. And I hope that it wasn't rude. And I wasn't trying to be rude or snarky. I was just like, it is what it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a big shop and I don't know how to, I mean, I, you guys are close right now, but sometimes you have to be far farther away when I'm doing other things because what people don't like is to come on a live and you can't see the person at all. So if I'm on the other side of the room and you can't see me and I'm away from the camera, then they're going to be like, where is she? She's not there. It, gets, it does get harder when you have so much fabric. It wouldn't be this hard if my table wasn't full of stuff. But what is that saying? The more room you have, the more stuff you have. The more money you make, the more you spend. It's the same thing with like my shop. Like The more room I have in here, the less room I have because I put more stuff in here. Okay, I think we're finally there. It's not perfect, but that's okay. We're going to be cutting into it anyway. What I just want is my fold to be good. And that's what matters. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Rebecca. Blues are popular. I know, I was thinking like a blue and purple mix. Ah, <laughs> thanks, Deborah. You're so sweet. Okay, so I have the, the waistband and the back. Now I need to do the front of this. So I always start way over here because I like to use the fold for my... Um, now I am going to be wasting a tiny bit on this one just because it's not lined up perfect. So I will be wasting that because I have to line the back up, but I'm okay with that because I don't really feel like fixing it. I am going to move it all the way over as I can. Okay. That's like right on my...
excuse me for one second. You need some water? Give me some water. My dog's in here again. She's sleeping. <laughs> yeah, like, I think lavender and like a baby blue or, I don't know, I'm just trying to think of something. Because this is so popular, this print, but I wanna be able to add like a different color. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so the four or five is done. I'm gonna put that away. I like to put things away as I go. That way I don't get confused because I do have a lot of like stuff going on at one time. So I like to get rid of the stuff I don't need. So this one's done. Sorry, I'm talking to myself a lot again. Okay, there's that. Okay, so. You guys are gonna see the whole process today. Okay, so this one and this one is done. Get this out of the way. And I do always look at the top of my order where it says how many items they've had ordered because sometimes it looks like it's only one item but they've ordered double of that. So always make sure you're checking that because I have, I've never sent off an order making that mistake but I've gotten close to it where I've packed it and I've realized that Oh, they ordered two of those. Crap. Okay, so here's the next one. 15 to 24. Okay, move it all the way over. Now I'm doing it this way without saving the fold because I want to get both of these on the same. There we go. That way I can move it up and it's even. Hopefully this all makes sense to you guys. You always come up with your own way of doing it as you do it. At least I do. Make sure you move your fingers out of the way when you cut. I left that because there was only a tiny bit on the back. So you always wanna make sure you're getting the back. We're almost done cutting. Where did I, oh, I put it over there. Okay, back, front, waistband. And now this can be put away. How's the video, is it still flickering or is it good? I have done that two times. I hope I never again, thank God they understood and they still let me. A five-star review, very thankful. Yeah, as long as you're like honest with them and you're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize that. Like, let me make it up to you sort of thing. People are usually pretty good at like understanding that people make mistakes, so it's okay. What isn't okay is when you like know you made the mistake and you just let it go. You have to like be the bigger person and confront them about it. Like, I'm so sorry I did that, that was my mistake. Yada yada, because again, everyone makes mistakes. I've done it, we've all done it. Okay, now this one is a three, four and a two, three. So two, three and a three, four, and then we're done. Here's the three, four and the two, two, three, three. 
Now this also gets confusing because I do so many of these that this is why I do it this way because it does get confusing. Like, what if I put the three four with the two three because they look exactly the same. Like you have to be very careful. So I, that's why I do it a certain way. I do the waistbands at the right same time. I need to get different like clips for these. I like these clips or like hangers, but they're sticky because they're like this, I don't know if there's, what is that, like silicone or something? Okay, so here is the three, four. Make sure it's perfectly lined up. Sorry, I'm a hot mess today, you guys. It's been a week. Okay, so this is the three, four, right? Yes, okay. That's done. Two, three, make sure my fold is like kind of weird. So I'm making it, make it straight. I really wish we can listen to music on here. Or I could like talk to you guys, like here you go. Okay, so two, three. Okay. This is the biggest one, so I'm gonna put it in the middle right here, that way I waste the least amount of fabric I can. I'm sorry I keep sniffling. I should go blow my nose real quick. How's little man doing? He's good. I thought, <laughs> so there's always something, right? So we got, you know, you pick your kids up from school. They give you like a form saying, you know, whatever is going around now. So we got a form at the end of last week saying that pink eye was going around, right? And last night his eyes got all poofy and stuff. And I think he just got something in his eye. And I was like, no, like we're leaving tomorrow. You cannot have pink eye. Like I don't even have time to take you to the doctor to get prescriptions for it or anything. So I put like a hot rag on it and stuff and then he was this morning he woke up and he was fine and I texted his teacher and I was like we're leaving tomorrow morning can you please check his eye and let me know like how it's doing if it still looks swollen or whatnot and she's like it looks totally fine I'm like okay he must have just got something in his eyeball because it was pretty swollen last night I and mean, he, he just kept rubbing it and rubbing it and kids don't know how to stop so I thought that maybe he had just gotten something in it because it wasn't both eyes. It was just the one. And he was rubbing both of his eyes. So I was like, if he has it, he'll have it in both eyes. But she said it's not red at all and that it looks totally fine. So I was like, thank goodness. I would have died. <laughs> but other than that, he's been good. So I know it looks like I'm cutting a lot of scraps up, but I use them all and I don't really keep the edges. Okay, so that's a three, four. Now my three, four is done. I'm gonna put this away. Where did I put that? I put it down here. I do got to start my printer up soon. So as soon as we get done doing this, I think I'm going to at least start that process of getting it started up. Okay, so this goes with the shirt that we're making. So I still have to make the pants for it. We have a lot of sewing to do. What time is it? 11, 12, 1, 2, or 3 hours. Let's see how much we can get done in 3 hours. But once I start sewing, I'm just going to I'm just going to completely sew, 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 sew. Which one's bigger? Fill up this hole 
We're barely going to make it. Okay, that's good though. Corner to corner. She's over it now. My granddaughter somehow got impetigo. I've never heard of it before. Very uncomfortable. The doctor prescribed an antibiotic. What is that? I've never even heard of that. I've literally never heard of that before. Little corner right there. But thank you so much for asking. I am still working on a design for the NF shirt that I'm gonna put on the site. Um, I haven't figured out what I wanna do yet with that, so. Still working on it, but I will, obviously I'll post it. I'll probably do like, it's, it's gonna be blues and greens. I wanna make it different though than all the other ones, just so that it's, it's like exclusive to my shop for him. If you guys are new here and you don't know what I'm talking about, my son was diagnosed with NF, neurofibromatosis one, and um, it's a, lifelong condition and it's just kind of like a you don't know until it happens sort of thing so he's fine he's good now he does have tumors that we've recently found out about um, but they're under control and we're just going to keep checking on them so I just try not to think about it and he's perfect to me so until something happens I'm not going to really try to think about it. So, um, but it is a genetic disorder, but nobody in my family has it that we know of. And they asked us if we wanted to get tested to see if we had it. And we just said no, because like, I'm going to be 40 this year. And my husband's 45 and it's like, we've been fine. So why would we want to ever know? Like <laughs> at this time in our life, is something wrong with us? So we just, I'm like, well, we're good. So um, so it can, it is, it is a genetic disorder, but it could have, a gene could have mutated when he was born and he could have got it that way. So there's a possibility that like nobody does have it in my family and he just got it. So I think that's it. Are we good? We're done. So yeah, it's just a wait and see process, which kind of sucks, but also in my eyes is like, well, I don't have to think about it every day until I know something is really not right. So there's that. That was a lo uh, long story short breakdown. <laughs> but yeah, so the shirt that I'm talking about is um, just something that there's no cure for it. So it's just something I wanted to put on my website to support the foundation and anything that I sell is going to go towards that. So all the proceeds will go towards the foundation and we do, we just got done doing the walk for him and everything. So we do the walk every year and just try to support him in that sort of way. He has no idea <laughs> right now. He just turned five. So he has no idea about any of it. Um, and I just hope to keep it that way. So anyhow, let's move on over here. So... So I don't get overwhelmed with everything going on because this is everything we have to do. So all these orders right here. So they're all cut. There's some on this table too. Um, and I have a shirt going. So what I'm gonna do is sew everything that isn't bell bottoms first. That way I can move all of these out of the way. And then we'll do bell bottoms because bell bottoms, I just have like a routine to do it with and I just need to like have my space. So we're gonna do all of these first, which is a lot, but we're gonna do it. 
And yeah, we're gonna do, we're gonna start with that. So I'm actually going to start with this. I'm gonna do the rompers first because those I need to press the um, the no show poly on or like the stabilizer. So this is a there's a romper here. There's no stabilizer here. This one I need to get the romper out of. I think yeah, it's a bunny romper. So some of these orders have multiple items in them. So here's the romper and these pieces. Okay, so this order I'll probably do on its own because there's multiple pieces. And then this has that, okay. Sorry, just trying to get myself organized over here. These are both leggings, bummies. Leggings, bummies, bummies, leggings, leggings. These are shorts, leggings, leggings. I'm putting everything together that like goes together. And then I don't wanna, I'm gonna move that, turn that back on. I don't wanna mess all this up. So this is gonna go, can you, you guys can't see the names on these, can you? We'll just do that. That. Okay, that way they're not. I'm gonna grab the table. Talking to myself, sorry. We do actually have a couple I can do these later. These are nursing pads, so I'll just do those later tonight. Ooh, I have a pair of leggings over here that I didn't do. But these ones will do, like, I can do later. No big deal. Okay, and this goes to this. How is, let's see, own up to your mistakes, life is simpler that way? Yes, absolutely. How big is your cutting table? Six by six. So it's a big square. Are you getting any owl fabric? I will have you make me an owl fit for her when she's born. Owl, do I have owl fabric? I don't know if I do. I love owls though. So let me write that down so I don't forget. I have a list going of different stuff that I want to add. So for sure, let me put that on here. If I can find a pen. Here's a pen. Let's do owls. Okay. How big is your kind of did that one? How's little man doing? Did that one? Doing good. My granddaughter somehow got, I saw that. She's over it now. It's caused from wiping the nose with hands and not washing afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, kids do that all the time. Are you getting any elf oh, ever got that? Yes, they said it's more common between the ages of two and six. She turned six in December. The way the doctor explained it to me is like a step before poison ivy. Oh my goodness, that sounds terrible. All right, well, I am, just so you know, I'm going to take my speaker off real quick because I need to blow my nose. <laughs> I don't want you guys to hear it right in your ear. And then I'm going to um, sanitize, so I'll be right back.
Okay, much better. Sorry about that. I have allergies. Okay, we're gonna do this really quick while I'm up. So I changed this, like I said earlier, to um, have it do all of the applique at one point so I can just cut it all out. Except for actually the T and the W have to do it on its own. I couldn't change that. But the flower part on the petals, I was able to change. So it's way faster now. Yeah, I love owls. I just have, I, I think maybe I did have an owl fabric in the very beginning and I don't anymore. But yes, owls are so cute. Owls and turtles. easier. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some stabilizer on here. So I'm just over here in the corner. Get some of these wrinkles out real quick. Smarter, not harder.
This is me every day, you guys. I'm literally back and forth, back and forth, back and forth all day long. Between the embroidery machine, between cutting, sewing, the printer. <laughs> I'm just like everywhere. Okay, and there's the first one. Here's the next one. This is a bigger one. So I gotta find some, I'm gonna double, double this one up because I don't have really big pieces in here. Talking to myself. How's the camera doing? And the mic. Just checking because it went out earlier. Whoops, I didn't do these pieces. Okay, here's some bigger ones. That'll fit. That one's small. Actually, I'm going to put the, this is the back. So I like to, let me find the back piece. I'm gonna put the, um, size on it really quick. So this is the front, this is the front. So the way I do it, this is done. So the way that I can do it without having to like wait for it to be done is I I just line up the liner. This is going to be the the liner on the inside and then I just put my tag like below it. That way it's in the right spot. And then my tag's on there. These are my DTF tags, so that they're tagless. So that's on, I just let it cool. I let it cool while I'm sewing. So let's do the next one. A little rabbit. Doesn't have to be perfect. The rabbit romper is six to nine months. I need to 
plug this in. Okay, now I should be done with that. this out of the way so I don't knock it over put it right there we do have blankets to do too you guys we have a lot to do okay that way I can see Guys, I just want to show you how cute my dog is. Look, she's so cute. Ready? Her little paw is like covering her face. Hi, Yes, you know. Hi. Are you so cute? Are you so cute? Are you so sweet? You say hi. Say hi. She's so sweet. She's so cute. I'll put you guys right here, actually, so you guys can see. Let's move back this way. I can actually move you down more, too. Would you guys rather be here or, like, in front of the sewing machine or on the side? What angle do you want? So I can move you once and... So I can move you once and be done. Nose. Every time I look down. Okay. She's adorable. Thanks for showing us. Of course, she's so cute. Look at her. She just laid back down. I actually need my other, hopefully if it's working. So I can clean this. I haven't cleaned it and I need to clean it. It's gonna get loud, sorry.
are good on oil. We'll do oil in a little bit on that, but for now we're good. So I can put you guys in front of me if you guys want to be in front of me or on the side. I don't know what angle is good. Let me know if that if that's good. Whoa, I feel like I just screamed at you guys. So I'm just going to sew, sew, sew. So if you guys have questions, just highlight my name and ask me. Or somebody else can answer if you know the answer. Um, but yes, I'm going to just be sewing. Lots and lots of sewing. Where did the, oh, I missed one. Hmm. It's like, where's the other one? What should we talk about? I don't really know what to talk about.
Again, don't look at my nails. <laughs> I'm going to paint them tonight. Rompers take me the longest because they have the most parts, so that's why I like to do them first um, when I have a lot of orders. Okay, so this one goes to this one. And with these big ones, what I like to do is just clip the ends right here when I go fast that way I don't have to move it around too much Am I still alive? Hopefully I'm still alive.
now this is like an AS, what is that? ASMR, whatever that's called. Where I'm just like quietly sewing. Throwing stuff around. I always do that. How did your daughter's volleyball team do in the tournament? They did so good. Um, they placed, they didn't place very good, but they played really well. It was They played really hard teams. So she's on 15s and they played like, older girls, like 16s and up. So it was really, really good for them. Um, but they won the first entire day, all their games. And then the second day they lost one. And then the third day, I think they lost, it was single elimination on the last day and they lost their first one. So they did really well. I just got my industrial jerky a couple of weeks ago and the fabric gets stuck on the foot of the machine. Do you know the black hook on the back? I don't know why. Oh, right here. The fabric gets stuck. Um, like um, when you're doing what? Like in, on everything? Because I've actually had that issue too, but it's just like I'll show you what I mean what, when it's happened to me. on everything. That's weird. Let me see. Hold on. It has happened to me, but only like when I'm doing my cuffs. Um, so when I'm going in circles, so it'll get stuck like right there. It's weird. I don't know if you necessarily need that piece. I don't see any like point to it. The only time mine's gotten stuck is when I do like these round cuffs and it'll get stuck back there. But then I just resituate it and it's fine. But like, I don't know why you would need that piece. It's not really connected to anything. So maybe just unscrew it. 
I don't know. That's just me. Whenever I have issues with stuff, I take it into my own hands and <laughs> mess with it. I know you're probably not supposed to, but that's what I do. But you live and you learn, and that's how I figure everything out. So maybe try taking it off and then see how it does for you after that. I just don't, because yeah, cause when I'm looking at it, I don't see, like, the purpose of it. Okay, so that's done. I just top stitch it. I'm going to put all my top stitching over here. I finally got my reliable up and running. Let's start that. Okay, so the thing is on this, I know you can't see me over here. I'll explain it to you. I was able to get all the placement stitches, but see how it stops? Um, it doesn't keep going, so I just do them all at one time. <coughs> if that makes sense. And then, let's see, one, two, three, four more. Let me see if I can try something really quick. Take that off. Take that off. Maybe stop there. Let's see if that works. I'm trying something. Didn't like it. Here, I'll bring you over here so you guys can see what I'm doing. So yeah, it didn't, it didn't do that. So I'm trying to stitch all these out at the same time and I don't have stops in. So it must be in the program that it does that. I don't know why it's doing that. Yeah, so it's stopping. But on here, under my needles, I don't, it's on number 12. So I'm having it, it's supposed to stitch out one more, which would be number 13. And then I was going to have it stop because I need to put my fabric down. So it must be in the program that it's doing that and not my machine. So I don't know why it's doing that. I need to fix the stitch length on that. Okay, so now here, let me go like this. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Okay, so I need to fix my stitch length on this over here. I don't know why it's doing that on that needle. So when it does that, you just have to go into your interface and fix the stitch length that it cuts it at. So, but now I can do this, which I wasn't able to do before. I can put this whole thing down instead of doing one at a time and have it do it. Before I'd have to cut it and then it would do the satin stitch and then each one was separate. But see how it stops? So I just have to hit start. I don't know why it does that. Haven't figured that out yet. I thought somebody just opened the door. So the reason why I do that, so it doesn't make those long stitch lines or extra spread. I need to go into the interface and fix the, the length of it cutting it, which I haven't done yet. So to avoid that, I just 
slice it. Okay, so now I can cut them all out at the same time, and then it'll do the satin stitches, which is really nice. I have not I've been able to do that yet. So I'm just gonna cut these out really quick. And then the shirt will be done. And hopefully, I've only done this, actually I haven't even stitched out this one yet um, without having it fixed. So we'll see if I have to press start each time. I hope I don't have to. I mean, it's better than having to like sit there and do each one one at a time. But you know what I mean. Sorry guys, I'm almost done. I don't know why I apologize, I always apologize. Lots of little petals. There. Okay. So... side get all these so now it ends up being like that where you just now it'll sit do the satin stitch on all those I couldn't figure out how to do the T and W just because I what I wanted to do was just have it do the applique over the whole thing but I was at least able to fix the other part I can't put it on, on that way sorry Weird angles. Let's see, hopefully it stitches out. Ah. I need to fix the length of that. There should be no more stops, so I don't, hopefully it doesn't make me do it every time. Love to see you doing well. Do you have any recommendations for a website designer? Um, actually, no, I don't because I had a website designer and I ended up just 
basically getting rid of them and doing it all myself. So, I'm sorry, I don't. I just don't trust people. I spent a really long time trying to get my website really good with them and it just didn't work. So I ended up just doing it all myself. Is what it came down to. Big Stanley water, ready to go. Okay, all right, we did one. Let's do the next one. <coughs> Is my mic okay? It's like flopping around everywhere. I wanted to make us like Disney Cruise shirts, at least for the boys. Because we're going on a Disney cruise. We had to leave tomorrow morning, but I didn't have time. I don't know why it just like got super busy. Which is good and I'm grateful. But it's like the times when you're like, you just want to mess around and do stuff, you don't get to. How's that? Let's see if I can. Maybe I'm trying to get you as close as I can. My, are you talking about my Etsy or my uh, Shopify? Shopify I did all by myself and it is a work in progress, girlfriend. It is so hard. Um, it's not hard, it's just super time consuming. So it's not even done. I keep adding to it every single day. Um, but I'm loving, yes, I'm loving the way it's turning out compared to the way my last website was. been a lot a lot a lot a lot of hours on that dang computer at night in bed like trying to like fix stuff and get the right like google search stuff and it's been hard i am you guys know i'm not techie at all so it's been a lot of trial and error um a lot of just designing and figuring out stuff along the way.
can't really say blood, sweat, and tears because there's no blood involved and there's no sweat involved. <laughs> but you get the gist. It's a long process. So that's why I say with anything that you do, just be proud of yourself on how far you've come because it's a lot of work when you own your own business and do your own thing. Like, it's a lot. So don't be ashamed. Be proud. And I know it's easier said than done because it's taken me a really, really, really long time to be proud of what I've done. And even still now I catch myself, like when my husband's like explaining to people like what I do and stuff, I get shy about it and I don't really talk about it. And he wants me to like talk about it and I don't want to. But I've come a long way with like being more open about it. It just goes with like, I guess the territory of people like saying, oh, you so, or I don't know how to explain it. It's hard to explain my feelings on it. machine's loud right now at least to me <laughs> but it's done so I'm probably definitely gonna have to work really late tonight because I have a lot of orders and I haven't accomplished that much today but that's okay the long part is cutting everything out and getting everything situated, the putting it together. The, I think it's the cutting and the packing, like the packaging it takes me a while. The sewing part doesn't take very long. I will have my persona in about a week. Yay, Tracy, that's so exciting. I'm hoping to win the quilt fest with SMP. We'll have my dream studio like yours and get the 12 needles. So excited. Oh my gosh. Yes, I will pray for you. Can't wait to see what you've en entered. Does your knife off on your serger? No. My knife is on. It just goes down a tube so you can't see it when I'm sewing. <clears throat> wonder if I can like zoom in on this. Woo, that's really close. Is that, is that better? Is that too close? <laughs> it's always super quiet when my machine is not going. Is that angle too much? See, it's cutting right here. You can see it. Whoops, I just dropped it on the floor. But no. It's cutting. OK. 
kind of machine is that? This is the Juki MO6814S. It is an industrial, I can't talk, an industrial serger. I just like to tuck in my tails. That's what I'm doing right now, if you're wondering. I don't know why it's getting stuck today. Am I leaving them too long or something? Come on, there we go. So now part of that order is done. I still have to top stitch this, but I'm gonna set it to the side while I work on the rest of this order. So they ordered a headband to match that. I already did the headband. I'm going to leave that out right here. Got some leggings, which I gotta do the waistband on. I'll do that in a second. Go ahead and just sew this together. Do you guys like this close-up angle or do you want me to like scoot it back more? Finally made it home to watch. Aw, how was your day? Were you working? I'm on here until two my time and it is 12 o'clock my time right now so two more hours Let's see what we can get done in two hours and then i'll probably be back on later tonight to finish i have a lot to do so we shall see No, I was at the cardiologist. Good appointment? So 
So this is all one order, so I'm just doing it all real quick together at the same time. That way I'm not going back and forth, if you're wondering why I'm doing different stuff. So when one order has multiple items, I just try to do it all at one time. And this is why I cut my pieces inside out or wrong side up. That way when I fold it, it's just ready to go. must have been cracked from this morning because it's making noises. These need to have sizes put on them. Hi everyone, hi Sharon. So waistband gets put on upside down the way that I do it, and then the cuffs. And everything that I say, like, goes for how I do it. I know you can do it other ways, like inside out, right side in, like the whole thing. I never flip mine. I always just do them the way that I sew it. So that is how I put my waistband and cuffs on. Um, but when I say upside down, I'm always meaning, like, when the raw edges are facing up. So like when this raw edge is facing up, my print is facing down the wrong way. The cuffs, right side, or ridges up, raw edges, and then the print is going the right way. That is how I do it. And there are other ways to do it. Like I said, um, every pattern has a different way of doing it. But I just taught myself how to do it this way, and I'm just, like, faster at it this way. The other ways confuse me just because this is how I learned how to do it myself. So, okay, real quick, I'm going to put the sizes on these. So 6 to 12, let's see, 6 to 9, 6 to 9. Okay, I'm going to put the tags on these real quick and sew that waistband real fast. Or, I'm sorry, the... Six to nine months. So I'm just putting my DTF tag on these really quick because I like to do it before I sew every the waistband on because when I once I sew the waistband on, it gets kind of like hard. It's just easier to do it when it's nice and flat, is what I'm trying to say. So I just do it like this under here. I know you can't see me.
I'm going to do it in an additional 15 seconds because my heat press turned off. Well, it's not off. It's just like cooling down. So this um, a Fusion IQ heat press, it has timer on it. So if I don't use it for like an hour or something, it turns, it automatically starts turning the heater off. Okay. So there's that. So I like to put those on um, while it's cooling. And then I'm gonna come over here really quick and turn this on. Turn this on. And just hope that this, I haven't really used this yet since I've got it back up and running. So let's just hope and pray that it works good. It seems like it's louder than my last one, but I don't know. Maybe that's just me. that off that machine is like got a, sounds like a blower when it's like not running all right I am back can't see oh I was just putting my I was putting the um the tags on and then I was just over at my other machine sewing the zigzag right here. Yeah, so it wasn't hot enough. So I need to redo that for a minute. What is it at? It's not ready yet. I'll just leave it on there until I can redo it. We can do the cuffs while we're waiting. Let's put the cuffs on. Do you want me to zoom out so you can see more? Mint rotary cutter sharpeners. Has anyone tried those rotary cutters? If so, do they work? The rotary cutters. Mint rotary cutter. Oh, the sharpeners. Um, I haven't, no. I just get new ones, I guess. Um, I make my own tags. I have a DTF printer, and I make my own tags. I used to physically put tags in, like physical tags, but I changed them to DTF so that they're tagless now. And I know like a lot of kids don't like tags. So I am now tagless. I'm trying not to take it off because it wasn't heated enough. Yeah, so these are what they look like. And it probably looks really big to you, but they're literally an inch, a little over an inch big or wide. So they go on like all my garments. And I have them for every size. I haven't listed them on my site yet, but I think I might put it up as a listing and then you guys can just um, upload your design that you want unless you want it. Because every, 
Like my, what am I trying to say? My wash instructions aren't going to be the same as your wash instructions. So unless they're exact, unless you use the exact fabric that I do, they're going to be different. So what you can do if you want me to print tags for you is upload your design through Canva or whatever like design program you use and save it as a PNG and upload it in my website. I can print them for you. <clears throat> and I think we said we got like, what was it, like 75 tags a sheet? I can't remember exactly how many we said, but it was somewhere up close to 100. If you did a mat an inch and a half like mine are. So... Like for me, I did sizes newborn all the way up to size seven, eight, I believe it was. So yeah, however many sheets that is. And then I've been using these tags forever. Well, since I've been making them, but I haven't had to make any more because you know, you do random sizes all the time. So it hasn't been, I haven't had to restock is what I'm trying to say. I can't talk today. I'm just going to reheat these really quick. Sorry, I'm just back here. I'm at the. I'm back here pr pressing these so that I can't move the camera every time. But this one isn't sticking for some reason. So let me get a different one. It's because I pressed it before the machine was ready. So now that it's ready. Let's try this again. DTF is finicky, but if you do it right, then it's good. Here, I'll turn you guys around so you can see what I'm doing. I'm literally just over here pressing. Always use a Teflon sheet, even if you have these, because sometimes the material that you press on will um, stick to it. You don't want it to stick to the top of your machine. So the reason why I like to press it before I put anything on here is because it just is easier to do it nice and flat. So I like to sew the body pieces together and then, and then do it. So for now, I'm just gonna, I'll just put it on the edge down here and repress. So I'll just hold it like that. I really, really like this heat press. It's really nice. Why is it only on that? Seconds. Dang it. I have it on embroidery. That's why. So you can also like do settings for your machine. So this, I have a bunch of settings. So it's on embroidery right now, which because I used it on embroidery yesterday and I forgot to switch it back. But I have embroidery, I have DTF, I have just for pressing, I have all kinds of settings in here. So, ouch, that's hot. Okay, so now I'm gonna let it cool before peeling it, but now it should be good to go. So let's turn you back around. trying to get you guys zoomed in but not like too much how's that I don't know you guys tell me what you like I will write this down that will be blissful 
Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, it, I think it makes it a lot easier. I mean, right now, obviously, it didn't look that easy, but it is. And then you literally just peel it off whenever it's dry. So, like, it just comes, like, right off. So there's nothing on here. And then there's my tag. So it's on there now. It's in the fabric, and it's not going anywhere. You can't feel it. It's just literally right on there. And it doesn't bother the baby. I know this takes time, but I do always tuck my strings in. You guys know that about me. I just like it extra secure, so I always tuck in the pieces. So like sometimes you'll see me cutting them off, and that's because I'll be sewing something else onto it, like a waistband. But once I complete the waistband, then I tuck my strings in, or my tails, whatever you want to call it. Um, so whatever the last piece is that I sew on the garment, I always tuck that in. That way it can never fall apart. Okay, so let's put this on. And then this is the last thing that I do on here before going over to the other machine. I do a lot of moving around. Um, so if you're new here, I go from station to station. So I'm doing all the body pieces over here on my serger. And then I'll do top stitching and waistbands or finishing of waistbands over on the other machine. So I will be using all of my machines today, including my cover stitch once I get to my bell bottoms, if we ever get to my bell bottoms. So um, See, my, sometimes my tail gets stuck on the hook back here, so I just take it off. this on. And these go inside, not on the outside, on the inside. Talking to myself. Oh, 
Oops, that's the wrong way. It goes the other way. Make sure your seams are going facing the right way. hear my dog snoring she's dreaming So see, I just peel it right off and then it's just on there. Okay, so those are done. I need to take, so there's four items in this order. So here's one, two, three, and then the headband is in there. I still need to press everything, but these need to be top stitched. So I'm gonna move these over here. Now I think we'll work on this order. This has a multiple item order as well. Um, this lady doesn't know the gender of her baby. So, and, the, and then they have, this is a third baby. So what she wanted was it to be planets because it's gender neutral. And she wants me to make her a top knot headband and a beanie. Hold on, did I do it the right way? I did. I was like, did I cut it the wrong way? Um, so she wants to do a top knot, a beanie for a boy, if it's a boy, a top knot for a girl, if it's a girl, and then two skirts, which for the older siblings, and then a pair of baby leggings, newborn leggings. So this one also has multiple items in it. So we shall see how long this takes. I think that's the hardest part is that like all of my orders usually have multiple items, which is a good thing, but that's why it takes a while. And that's why sometimes my shipping times vary. If you ever order for me and you notice that sometimes they're at two weeks, sometimes they're at one week, sometimes they're, you know, it just depends on where I'm at and how busy I am. And it's okay to change your timing around because I strive on giving each and every order the same attention. I don't rush through orders even though I'm like in a hurry right now to get these done I'm still like you know paying attention to them and not like rushing through it and messing them up and making sure that I'm doing it right that's what handmade is all about right
So right now I'm just kind of like messing with the, the headband. So I like to get these, I like to get this knot like underneath as best as I can. So I just kind of mess with it until it gets under there where I like it. <laughs> like to have it in a certain spot. And once it's there, then I'm golden. But it does take a little bit sometimes to get it to the right spot. I don't want it like bothering the baby's head in any way, but I also want it to look nice. And I like to get, so I have it in the right spot, but I'm trying to tuck this like piece in right here and then I can tighten it. So there we go. And then I'll pull it tight. Okay. So there it is. I still need to press it, but there's kind of like, whoop, you can't see. But that's kind of how it looks. And there's no, like, the seam is underneath here. You can't really see it. It's tucked in away. So that's how I like it. So there's that. Let me sew this piece really quick over here. So I'm just doing the zigzag. This is a newborn legging, so it's super tiny. Super duper tiny. What are you all doing? Is anyone else working with me? I'm going to put the tag on here really quick. I'm 
gonna switch this over to DTF because it keeps doing only eight seconds. Go to here, here, DTF. There we go. That way it doesn't keep doing that. And working. Make a twirl skirt, I'm at work. Making a twirl skirt, I wish. I'm working, but the office, not much fun. Doing some crochet with the new crochet hook I bought. Fun. Once I get off, I got to finish my quilt for the contest. Good luck on that. I'll be praying for you. I'm thinking of you. I'm packing shirts. Um, good morning from Australia. I'm designing Cabbage Patch Kids clothing. How cute. I love hearing what you guys are doing. Because I'm just doing the same old thing. <laughs> sewing, sewing, and sewing. Look at how tiny these little guys are. Oh my gosh, they're so tiny. This is like doll clothes right here. <coughs> oh my goodness. I don't even really have room for like a clip in here. Can't believe I'm leaving tomorrow morning. Like what? So tiny. Too cute. Making scrunchies. I have a vendor event coming up in two weeks. Oh, fun. I used to do those. Except on Sunday when we went out to breakfast or brunch. Actually, it was breakfast with our neighbors because they're moving. Um, they were setting up their tents, and I was, at that point, very happy I don't do them anymore because it was raining out, and it was so cold. And I remember those days when I did them, and I had all my stuff out, and it was pouring down rain one time. My stuff got ruined. Like, I was so sad. Because, you know, you spend a lot of time making all this stuff. And it just got ruined. They were all trying to put their, like, shade, their, like, little curtain shade things up that go on their tent and stuff. Little baby, baby ankles. Okay. Well, I'm definitely, so I obviously I have to get off at two to go pick up my kids. 
but I'm definitely going to come back on here and finish. So whoever is interested in coming back on my live, um, that was weird. It was super weird. It like left it on here and left it on there too, but it looks good on here. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm still going. I'm still going to be live for another hour and twenty minutes ish. But I have to leave to go get my kids at two, and then I'll be back on live because I have got to finish all of these. I don't have a choice. So, um, I'm more productive, I think, on here. Sometimes only. Sometimes I am, and sometimes I'm not. But when I know I need to get my stuff done, I'll be productive. So I do. I did want to package everything live with you guys because you guys always want to see packaging and stuff. So I'm going to do that. Um, it's easier to go live than it is to do a video at this point. So um, if you guys are interested in coming back later, I will be live later too. Um, I know I said that last time and I didn't get to go live again. This time I will be. I will come back on. My kids will be in here. Just FYI, um, they are pretty good. So I might just have to like help them with something or get them a snack or whatever, but it's all good. Everyone has kids. They're pretty good about letting me work though. Uh, because I need to finish all this, and then tonight I figured after the kids go to bed, I would, if I'm done with all this, then I could pack, because I need to pack them still. But I've done all their laundry, so all their stuff is in the laundry room. Because I'm like, I'm not going to put it all away if I'm just going to pack it, so I can pull from it. And then whatever I don't take, we can put away. Okay, and look at these little tiny things. They're going to be like this once I get them all said and done. They're like super tiny. Obviously, they're inside out, but you get the gist. Give me one second. I need to blow my nose again. time will you be live later on so I love seeing your kids are adorable I'll be inside of a mall oh that's good that's good Miranda um okay so my kids I pick them up at two and I usually get home at three because one of them's in preschool one of them's in first grade so they have different pickup times just 15 minutes difference but that 15 minutes difference makes it like an extra half hour <laughs> so anyway um yeah So I'll be back on later, probably like, I'd say between 3 and Have you tried omega-3 for your allergies? No. What is that? Yeah, it is nice since it's pretty chilly here. Yeah, my allergies are horrible. So sorry.
I know I'm like sniffling in your guys' ears. So this is the hard part. I am flipping this out, right side out. So I'm making my beanie right now. This is my lined beanie, if you're wondering what I'm doing. Basically fake fish or take them in capsules. You could try nettle tea. That's a type of herbal tea. Yeah. Okay, so it's just like a vitamin, yeah. Or a palm of pecans. Huh. You guys have all the ideas. I'm flipping out my beanie right now. Takes a second. I like to have no like top stitch seams on it. So this is the way that I do it. It gets easier as I run, once I get it through that little hole, it gets easier. So I'm like flipping it out right now. Kind of like a scrunchie, but a little bit tougher because the fabric's a little bit thicker. But once you get it going, it's easy and you just like pull it through the inside so it like pops out. So you have to get it through this little hole first. But you can't take it all the way through. You have to leave these pieces right like this. That makes sense. So what you do, it, it seems weird right now, but just, just watch. So I keep these together right here, so the inside to the inside. And I know it looks like I'm doing, gonna sew it wrong, but just wait. Have fun on your trip, that's a long time on a boat. I've never been on one and I'm not sure I'd feel about it. I think I might get bored, not sure. There's so much to do on it that you don't get bored, I promise. But yes, um, the first time I went, I thought the same thing. And then my husband and I actually went on a two week cruise one time and you get off on your ports and you do, you do fun things. It's so much fun. I love it. It's kind of actually like the perfect way to like get away and like not be able to like think about stuff because you have nowhere to go if that makes sense like you're literally on a boat and you can't do anything else so i'm just straightening things out so these are my beanies. They can either wear them like this or you can fold it if you want, however you want to do it. I know you can't really see it. So you can either fold it like that. This is for a newborn, so it's small. Um, or you can leave it like this and I'm gonna top knot it. So in order to make it lined on the inside and outside like this, you basically, um, I'm going to sew this right here closed, just like that. So what I do is I like to basically, you can cut it if you want, but this cuts it for you. So I'm not going to do that. I like to do it at an angle. So it's like rounded and I just kind of move along with it.
So it's kind of rounded like that. Don't worry, you flip it out again. So you flip it inside out now, and then that's on the inside. So you'll never see that. So you just flip it out. So now that's on the inside and you don't see it. And I just take like my screwdriver to push it out. Don't push too hard. But it just comes right out. And then you just round your corners like you normally would with anything else. <coughs> so once I get it like that, I just take my little corner turner and I just go in here and make it nice and rounded. I'm just, I'm sure you guys know how to do this. I'm just talking for no reason. But I just make it as flat as I can because it is double lined, so it is a little bit thicker. But I like it that way because then you don't see any of the seams. I'm gonna go close that door. I don't know why it keeps like opening. And then I will press it. Nice and flat. They do take a little bit to make, um, but they're so, so cute. And then you just top knot it on the top up here. So I'm gonna press it really fast so I can top knot it and be done with it. So I like to just put my fingers in there and lay it nice and flat. And it does, so you have to make sure you do it the stretch on the right way. That way it will stretch over the baby's head because if you don't do it the right way, it's not gonna stretch over their little noggin. Okay. So it's nice and flat now. So that's why I round it so that when you once you round it, it's nice and round and you don't have like hard corners. So here's what it is. They can either wear it like that or you can fold it like I said. Um, and then you just make your top knot. So I just basically just make a regular top knot. I like to start like down here. I kind of hold it and then just, it. it's very thick because obviously my material is thicker. So I just make a knot and then I just pull it tight up at the top once I get my knot through. So I just pull it as I go. Whoa. Making it just like that. So again, so here it is. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's your little Top knot, you can make it however tight or loose as you want or how big as you want. I like to give them a little bit of room because again, once the baby's head goes in there, so think of this as the head, you want it to be like on the top right there. So there's my little, so she wanted a beanie and a matching, you guys can't see anything I'm doing with the angle. So here's the beanie. And here's the little matching headband. So if she has a boy or a girl, and you can fold it just like this if you want to. I just package it like this so that they can do whatever they want with it. That way it's not wrinkled. Okay, so this skirt that I'm doing right now is going to be the 5-6 skirt. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to move you guys up a little bit and over here. That way you can see what I'm doing because what I'm going to do right now is 
put this on my skirt. I don't have enough room at my table to do it, but I like to, we have like an hour before I have to go. I'm going to press this really quick actually. You guys are zoomed in on me. I'm gonna press this. So on my skirts, I do a hemline on the bottom and that's what I'm about to do right now. So <coughs> I want the hemline to be nice and flat for me. So I put tape on it, which you don't have to do. It's just my process. So I like this to be nice and flat. It looks very big. This is a size four or five, but when it's done, all said and done, obviously you have the waistband and it makes it nice and smaller. So this is how I do it. Making sure that my planets are facing the correct way. And this is how I do my, my hemming. Yes, it uses a lot of tape when I have the bigger sizes, but I don't care because it makes my life so much easier. Um, doing this, it's an extra step, but again, I don't care. This tape is not expensive. I buy rolls and rolls of it and it works for me, so. Um, the reason why I'm doing two lines, if you're wondering, is because I can't find this exact tape. This manufacturer doesn't make it in a half of an inch, only a quarter of an inch. And I really, really, really like this tape. It doesn't gum up my needles. Um, it doesn't give me any issues. So when I have to do a half of an inch, I just do two lines versus one. And when... Um, I do my bell bottoms, I just leave like a little bit of extra room. I could just do two lines on all bell bottoms, but I've gotten so used to the way that I do my bell bottoms that why would I change it? I don't know. I guess I could just start doing two lines on everything. I wish they would just make a tape that I can use that doesn't gum up my needles, but they don't. I've tried them all. Like literally, I have rolls and rolls of tape that like I can't use. Okay, so once that is done, so there's that. And then I do my, where is my ruler for this? I have a specific ruler that I use. Where did I put it? I moved things around, so I don't know where I put it. Is it under here? go think amber think where did I put it oh, where did I put it ruler where would you be well let's see here we're just gonna do that we're gonna improvise so this is what's going to be going, let's see, we're going to be doing, this is my waistband elastic. We're improvising right now because I cannot find my ruler. I don't know where I put it and I can't literally go look for it right now because we don't have time. So in that case, this is my elastic that I'm using. It is one and a half inches wide. And I like to do a, um, 
What am I trying to say? I like to do a like little ruffle on top. So my ruler is exactly the size I need it to be. <laughs> Where is my ruler? Let's see if this one does it. How big is this? Maybe this will work. This should be fine. This should be fine. We'll see at the end. Hopefully it works. So what I do now is I basically measure down from the very top of the skirt. And I just make... First of all, I'm gonna make this even because it's not, after I press it, sometimes it's like not even. And then I mark it. Do you have to go potty? There you go. Ooh, it's chilly out. Go potty. Go potty. I mark it. This one I only do one line. I'm running out of tape. And I go underneath. She didn't even go to the bathroom. Here's more tape up here. I said I was gonna close that door because it keeps making noises. Sorry if you guys are wanting to ask me anything. I'm not looking at the, the camera right now, so. I apologize. Okay, there's one. I'm trying to do it so you guys can see, so I'm moving stuff around. Again, I know this is an extra step, but it makes my life easier when I go over to sew it. It just lays down nice and flat for me. I don't have to mess with it. So I like to make my life easier by doing this <laughs> when I sew. Okay. So there's that one. Now we gotta do the other one. So this is the top and that's the bottom. Where did I put the, oh, it's over there, okay. So this one goes here to that size. Now we'll do the other one while we're over there. This one is a two, three. Five, six. So a five, six is 20 inches. around my edges it's way easier for me when I go to like I do my skirts different than I do my leggings or anything else if you're wondering so this goes to that one 
Yeah, what are you guys saying? It looks so soft. Based upon the amount of sewing you do, how often do you normally switch out the blades on your rotary cutter? Um, it just depends. Honestly, like, I need to change out my blade right now. I just, I can tell when it's like skipping. Or I can actually feel it too when it's about to do like not a great job. Two, three, 18.5. Um, so it's just a matter of by feel, if that makes sense. But yes, a lot of sewing. It's fun though. And if you guys don't have these scissors, I highly recommend them. They're the Kai, the Kai scissors. These are the 7205. I have these ones and I have small ones. I love them. They're so good, so good. Let me press this really fast. Sorry guys, I'm not trying to ignore you. Um, I have, I just offer a lot of different like stuff in my shop. So I think it's the, the most part is just like figuring out like order, orders to do things in. I always like to do like, this is a big order or multiple items. So I always like to do, I always say like, don't do one item at a time, but that's like if all of your orders have one thing in them. If they have one thing in them, then I grab all the leggings and do all the leggings at one time, like bulk mass order, like at one time. But if orders have multiple items in them, like this one, I want to get that order done at the same time. I don't want to like go back and forth. So that's why you're seeing me do a romper and then leggings and a beanie and a headband and skirts because it's all one order. So I want it to be all done at the same time, if that makes sense. It's just easier for me. For my, my thinking. The fabric, like, um, sometimes when I press it, if I don't press it before I cut it, then it's like uneven a little bit. So that's why I just cut it a little bit just to make it even. It's not gonna ruin the outcome of the item at all. It's just making it more even. And this is a heat soluble pen. So it'll come right off. Once I press it at the end is what I usually do and it comes right off.
Okay. I'll use that later for my bell bottoms. Okay. Now we can sew the bodies together. Okay. I switched accounts. I'm back. Yes, I've owned my Kai scissors for years. I love the Kai scissors. Okay, let's go back down here. Hopefully that angle's okay. All right. So, I like to sew the sides together. First, you'll see the process. I'm just putting these together really quick. Hold on one second. One of them is larger than the other one. That sometimes happens when I press them as well. So I'm just gonna go make this even really quick. That's why I always press before I cut and I didn't go with my own judgment. But that's okay. It happens. down too. Okay, so I like to, and I always leave, when, if you notice on the tape, I always leave like, I don't know if you can see that, like a quarter of an inch. That way I don't sew over it. Sometimes I sew over it a little bit, but that's, that's fine. But I try not to for the most part. Okay. I'm going to be right back. <coughs> I can see where it's uneven right here. So I'm going to cut it right here. It's from improvising, but that's okay. I can make this work. There. That'll work. 
just fine. Hopefully the other one's not like that. Probably. We did the same process. So it probably is. Okay. So next up, I do the waist. So the waist I know is the bigger part. So this is the bigger part. This is the hem. So I want to surge my waistband because I don't surge my hem because I'm going to be using the cover stitch. It doesn't need to be. So I just go like this around the whole thing. And these are big skirts. So it's going to take a minute. Lots of sewing. I try not to take off too much of the top. I just do it on the edges. I don't like to cut it is what I'm trying to say. I just want a nice like hem. So make sure your seam is going the right way. To hide that so you can't see it. And then this is where I take this off. And I fold it down. And this is how I get the really nice straight, um, like, it's just easier to sew at the end of the day. <laughs> so I really don't have an explanation for why I do that. It's just, it's so much easier for me when I go to sew it at the end. I press it. It's just, it's nice and flat. It doesn't give me any issues. Like, it doesn't bulk up. It's just so much easier to do it like that for me. Make sure my seam is going the right way. Flatten it. Flatten. It is a little bit harder with these bigger skirts, but you make it work. So there's the top and then I will press it with my hands. If I did this yesterday, I would probably have to heat press it if it sits after a while, but because I'm doing it like right away, it doesn't really need to be heat pressed to set it, but yeah. And then this. Do the same thing. And this is the hem.
and I do two pieces of tape all the way around, makes it even at the end. trucks were loud out there. That one is good to go hem, but I'm going to do the other one and I'm going to just put this on here because this is this one. This is the big one. We're gonna go like that, just put that together. And move that along over there with all of this stuff. Next, what do we got? 125, okay. Top to top, make sure you do top to top. I've done it before where it's been, I've had the top up here and then the hem down here on the side. You don't wanna do that. I think I've done that with Sandra before when we were talking, I had to redo the whole thing. It's so mad. You're just not paying attention. You want to make sure it's as even as possible. You guys haven't gave this video a thumbs up I would really appreciate it it helps my content get reached by everybody whoops why did I just do that Urgh. I don't like to take the tape off until I finish surging the top because it sticks to my the feet on the machine, it sticks. So I leave it on until it's done, until I get done doing that.
Okay, now I can take it off. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. I kind of like to do these ones first. Fold it over. Again, this step is not necessary or like for everyone. You don't have to do this, but I just love how it helps me when I'm at this machine. Okay, so now we're gonna move over to the other machine really quick so we can at least get these going. So I can finish this order. I'm gonna move these over here because we still have all these to do. And I'm going to move you guys up over here. That way you guys can... Let's see here. How do I want to do this? What am I at on here? Okay. Um, turn this off for now. Uh-oh. mic doing I wonder if it's gonna die soon because we've been on here for a while hold on ah don't fall over <laughs> sorry guys I'm gonna give you guys a better view really quick Moving you all around. But I think you'll like this view better. Okay, let's see. We can 
some of that. How's that view? Is that too close? Or do you like it? situated so this right here I'm just doing my hem so this is the bottom of the skirt that I'm doing right here and I'm gonna measure out to see where it's gonna be at okay I think that's pretty good So there's my hem. Super nice. I love it. This machine is really good with hemming. Makes it super fast. So that is why, well, A, it's the machine, and B, it's the tape that I put on here that makes it so easy to hem. It tacks it down for me so that like literally I don't have to do anything else and it makes it like so nice and flat. Like that is why I do that extra step. It makes it so much nicer at the end for me. Don't mind my nail. I gotta paint my nails tonight. But that is why I do the things I do. I feel like I pushed the volume on here a little bit. I can hear myself talking, that's weird. <laughs> Where's it at? Let's see, right there. Okay. Like there's another piece missing somewhere. <laughs> Usually I pull two pieces off. So let's go ahead and trim that. Okay, so there's one that's done, one and done. And this, I'm, I'm keeping these size tags along with it. That way I don't screw up which one's which. I mean, I probably could tell, but still, you know what I mean. Next. I like to start a little bit off of the seam because it's really hard to get under there when the seam is a little bit higher at the end when I do the um, needle under there or the hook under there.
overlap it a little bit. See that? This machine is just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it out. And I actually like to, let me see, I'm gonna come out here, go over here. I'm done with this for right now. We'll do more of this machine later. But for now, I am, I like to press this really quick before I, because then I don't have to press it at the end. I like to press it before I put the waistband in. This is just for my skirts. I do everything, every item I do, I do differently for each one. And then I'm gonna press the hem that we just did. Again, this is because I don't wanna to have to press at the end because once the skirt's all gathered and stuff, it's really hard to press it nicely. So I'm just gonna do it now instead of at the end. So now it's all nice and pressed. And I'm actually going to put the size tag on it right now really quick. And it's, it's the same front and back. So you can choose whichever one you want it to go on. It doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna put it right here. I'm just gonna use a little bit of my tape so it doesn't move. And then that's where I'm going to put it, right in the center. <coughs> I'm going to flip it out, make it easier. Make it easier. And then we'll do the next one the same way. So this has its tag on. I'm going to let it cool while I do this one. And we'll just press this one all at the same time because it's smaller. setting. I need to do it again. Okay, there we go. I have it on setting one is 20 seconds and then setting two is eight seconds because when I do DTF, my first setting is 20 seconds and then when I second press it, it's for eight seconds. So if I don't move it back over to step one, then it does it for eight seconds. I have to go to the bathroom. Okay. So there's that. Let me just press these sides really quick. Because I don't want to have to press them later.
Now I don't have to, I just have to make sure that this stays with this. Okay. There's that, there's that. Let's, I wanna, there's a little, oh, I already put this on. Never mind. Why were these over here? Was I just showing you guys them? I don't know. Okay, well. Okay, let's move this to that. Let's go this to that. I'm gonna move you guys over here now, actually on this side. How's that? It's been a while since I caught you. What type of labels do you use now, if you don't mind me asking? I don't mind you asking at all. Um, I make my own now, which is very exciting. I use my DTF printer for them. So, it's real exciting. Tagless. Tagless, tagless. I'm gonna put this up here if I can. Let's move this, put this back here, there we go, as far back as we can. Okay. I'm going to finish off my leggings. This is the first time I've been using this machine since, um, since I've got it back up and running, because remember it wasn't running before? So wish me luck, hopefully nothing happens because I don't have time to sit here and fix it. So hopefully it just works for me. So let's see if my settings are correct. My settings are correct. <coughs> let's see. Let's go like this. Move you. So you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just tacking down the waistband. Front stitch, back stitch. And now I hold the back and the front. I don't know if my tension is good yet because I haven't really used it. So I don't want my thread to break. That's why I'm going kind of slow testing it. It seems louder than my last one. Louder, but smoother. I don't know if that makes sense. The stitching is smoother, but the machine sounds louder. I don't usually go this slow, but I'm testing it right now. And I just went over a big hump, so it's doing good. Looking good. Go a little bit faster. <laughs> okay.
I always like to test out a new machine when I get it. Even though I've already had this, this is actually a newer model than the one that I had. So I'm just testing it before I actually go full throttle. And I test for a while because that's just me. But it did good. Let's see. It looks really nice. I don't know if you guys can see that. But looks pretty good. Little newborn pants. So cute. So that's what it looks like. Not sure if you can see that. Where do I go? Up here. <laughs> Boop. Okay. Those are done. Just need to be pressed. Done, done, done. Okay. Let's move on to this one. Let's take off my label. So there's my tag. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first thing I do, so now I'm going to take it off of, um, off of zigzag. I'm done with zigzag right now. And I'm going to do straight stitch. And I'm going to move my straight, so I'm at a three and a half for zigzag. And I think I'm going to move it up to four and a half for my straight stitch. I was about to say the same thing as Sarah. It sounds different than it used to. Yeah, that's what I just said, that it sounds different to me. It sounds, I don't even know what the word is, how to describe it. I have a lot of machines. I do, Tracy. I have so, I have, let's see. I have, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think I have like nine or no, I think I have like 10 plus my printers and stuff. I have a lot, <laughs> but I do a lot of stuff. So I don't just do clothing anymore. I do other stuff. Okay. So I do a top stitch up here. So what wasn't it? an upgrade. Um, so it wasn't an upgrade, but they don't have the machine that I had anymore. So this, you know, just like cell phones, how it's the same phone. It's just an upgraded version, I guess. So yeah, I guess you could say it was an upgrade. So it's a different version of the one I had. Um, so same, same everything. It does sound different, but I'm just trying to figure out the tension because I haven't really used it. So I want to make sure it's good. It sounds louder. I don't know. I don't know. It does sound a lot louder than my other one. The stitching looks beautiful, but it is loud. And I know it's oiled because it's brand new and I've oiled it. It's completely brand new. Maybe it just has like, it needs to be worn in. I don't know. It's really loud though compared to my other one. Sounds like a race car or something. What the? I don't know if I like that. That is super loud for me. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just spoiled and used to my jukies that are like super quiet. You guys tell me, is that super freaking loud? Come on, get off. Stitching is really nice though. It's another machine, the old cord didn't fit the new one. Yes, exactly. Okay, so now we're gonna flip it inside out or right side out. And 
we are going to do the sides now. Yeah, I don't know why it's like that. I'm gonna give it a little bit of oil. I'm gonna give it a little bit of oil. Just on the top to see if that like quiets it down a little bit. Cause it's freaking loud. What time is it? I have to go in like five minutes, guys. It's doing like two drops on each of these like sites. They marked where it needs to be oiled. It sounds like a drill. It is pretty loud for an industrial. I know. Like, I don't know why it's so loud. I hope, like, I mean, it's running good, but why is it so loud? Sorry. I don't know why it's so loud. It doesn't sound loud to me. Okay. It's actually a little bit quieter now that I oiled those pieces, but like, it's so loud. It's just loud compared to like our other industrials that we're spoiled with that are quiet. You know? Okay, I leave an opening for my waistband. My alarm is about to go off. So you guys, I will be back live. Give me about an hour when I get off. Takes me about an hour round trip to go pick up the boys and come back. And then I'll come back on. I'll let my stuff charge up a little bit, like my microphone and stuff. Um, but anyway, this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see that. So I like this little top quarter bench and then I sew the line right here and then I put the I put this in here so this is how I like to do my skirts and I think it's super cute it gets all roughly here we can finish this one really quick so you guys can see it um for those of you who haven't seen it done hopefully I can get it done in time so I just put these on the ends right here and then I grab this guy And I just stick it through my casing that I made. Get in there. There we go. I use non-roll elastic. Nice. So that ruler we used was literally perfect. So the improvision... When I improvise on not being able to find my other ruler, 
this one worked. So, so let me show you. If we if we can't finish this, this is why I like doing the um, the way that I do it. There's my alarm. Is because at the end of it, it looks like this. Once it's all done, the top ruffle up here is what I why I like to do Alexa off is why I like to do that quarter of an inch on the top right there because then it like ruffles like that and that's your waistband on your skirt. And it looks so freaking cute. It's so girly because it's like super ruffly. I love it. What kind of machine is this? This is just a regular stand. It's an industrial machine, but it's just a straight stitch and zigzag. So this is what m the machine I use to do all of my top stitching, um, all of my waistbands, all of that sort of stuff. So that's what I use this machine for. So that ruler was actually perfect size. It could I could maybe do it a little bit bigger because I'm having I'm not having a hard time, but it's like really snug compared to what it usually is. So. Maybe it's just getting past that seam right there, that side seam. But yes, this is how it looks at the end. It's so roughly and cute. I love it. Or maybe we are all up in its business. You are like literally my face is right up in its business. So yes, that's a good call. <laughs> You're funny. But no, in all reality or realness, truth, honesty, it is really loud um, compared to my other one, compared to the other one that I had, which is a bummer because you would think that they would upgrade it and make it quieter. <laughs> okay, so it was just getting past that seam Sorry, you can't see me. The, ang the angle of the camera is like facing the machine. So all I'm doing is pulling my waistband through and pulling it around. So at the end of the day, you have a scrunched up skirt. This might be the longest way to make a skirt, but I think they're so cute and I love the outcome. So... A lot of my patterns that I do, I make them on the out, like not by how fast or easy they are to make. I like to look at the outcome and if I like the way they look, just like the beanie that I did, you can make a simple beanie. I've made so many simple beanies, but that one is the cutest one, I think. The knot is cute. The... You don't have like all the side seams and all that stuff for the baby. So I like it. It takes longer, but I'm okay with that. Okay, I really got to go, but I wanted to show you guys this really quick. So anyway, pretend that this is all sewn and done and the skirt is all like nice and even around. Just pretend that's the skirt. This is how the waistband looks at the end of the day. It's all like scrunched up. And then, then you have your hem on the bottom. So um, I will finish that when I get back. If you guys want to join me again, I'll probably be on in the next, give me like an hour, probably like an hour to an hour and a half. And I will be back live. So hopefully I'll see you guys all then. Thank you guys all for being here. Those of you who that can't join in on the next live, and hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Um, it won't be next week because I'm going to be gone on my cruise, but it will be the following week when I get back. So thank you guys all again so much. I love each and every one of you, and thank you for all your support always. I will see you guys soon. Bye.